What's up guys, welcome to your 47th Java tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be finishing up talking about static members and also I'm going to be showing you a nice little trick that you can use uh, when accessing static members. So go ahead and in your tune class or not the class with not your main method in it class without your main method in there we go and let's go ahead and under this constructor let's go ahead and build three other simple little methods um, we're just gonna have one to return the first name return the last name and return the member so public string and let's just name it like get first it's not gonna take any parameters and we're just gonna have it return first simple enough and now let's go ahead and make one for last name public string get last and guess where we're gonna have this one to return last oh you guessed that oh not bad and now let's have one more and we'll name it um let's see public static remember this method needs to be static static int get M E M B R S. I know I could figure out how to spell members. Get members. And then what are we going to have this one do? Let's just have return members. So now we have three variables up here a private sh first, a private last, and a private members, which is static. This method returns first name, this method returns the last name, and this method right here, or it's going to return um, the variable members. So now that we have three objects made, go back in your main apples class or whatever you called it. Let's go ahead and let me show you how each member has its own set of data. So let's just go ahead and for um, housekeeping sake, put system out print line. And let's just go ahead and print an empty line right there because it'll just be easier. Now let's just go ahead and copy that because we're gonna be using it Oh, I didn't know we could do that, did we? And let's just go ahead and put what do we want to print on our first line? And it's really our first line because this one's just an empty line. Well, what I want to show you that is even though they all share that variable called members, they each have their own set of data. So let's go ahead and put member one, which is our object one, which was Megan Fox, and we'll put get uh, first and then let's do this with last copy get last and what was the last one called get members so get members so here's what's going on now um let me make sure it's going to print out yep so anytime you call this one it's going to have megan fox and this is unique to its own object but it's going to look at get members and see that it's static so it's going to share this variable with all the other ones so depending on how many members are in this then that's what it's going to print so let me go ahead and run this click OK and we have again we have our other data, data up there if you're wondering where it went but it says Megan which is unique Fox which is unique and 3 which is shared among all objects so now let's go ahead and change that to two. Member two, member two, member two. Now let's go ahead and run this and now you can clearly see. Natalie, which is unique, Portman, which is unique, and three, again, that three. And that three is because this private static int. Static means, all right, this variable is shared between all objects. So we don't need to, you know, why would you make a separate variable if it like let me think how to put this why would you make a separate variable that is going to be unique that we're going to have to update in every object if it's the same value no matter what object it is so I mean you don't need to so we're not gonna so that's where static comes in handy and now let me show you that trick I was talking about um since the variable static variables don't change between objects Static information is value is available even when you don't have an object. So, for example, say forget about all these objects right here, and we actually can't just delete them, but we'll delete these right here, and we can just add it in this print line. Really, instead of 
calling a separate object like an object and then your dot separator and then your method like that what you can do with stack is just put the name of the class and put your dot separator and then put your method get members like that now let me run this and you can see the three right here can you guys see that the three right there so before we were never able to do this we had to get an object and build an object anytime we want an access to any of these members or any of these methods right here but with a static it's a little bit different because it's not going to change from object to object since no matter how many objects you have the variable is the same so that's why java lets you instead of having to have an object which you can do by the way what we just did you can also just put the class name and put the static method ahead of that so again anytime you have a static method that use static variables um, you don't have to have a separate object you can just put the class name and then you can just put the method and that's how like in um stuff like math like math functions and math constants um, that's how they do that so that's just a nice little tidbit of information so don't forget that um, the static variables are shared among all objects and that you don't have to access static um, methods with a specific object you can just do it with a whole class since it's the same so uh, thank you guys for watching I think I confused you enough for today but uh, like I said thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next tutorial